Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and I am planning to cover a two-part series on how to do some more advanced uh, work with the materials and shaders inside of Unreal Engine 5. The first part here that we're going to be covering in this video is going to be going over how to clean up and organize uh, your materials a little bit when they start to get a bit messier and have uh, a lot of mess to them. And then with the second part uh, to the video, we are going to be covering how to add a kind of threshold or blend transition to your materials as well. As you can see with this one, um, if I actually change the color, the color in between my snow and this uh, middle material here, uh, I have a transition phase and I can control that at a normal map or anything else that I'd like to just for that specific area and I'd like to kind of go over how to set that up. So uh, I'm going to cancel that for now and leave it like that. But with this one, as you see, if I expand upon this material, it gets a bit messy just because I'm using a bunch of height lerps and everything. Um, this is how uh, in my previous video going over vertex painting and uh, setting that up, uh, how I would potentially set up, you know, two materials blending together. But as you see, uh, it can definitely get pretty messy. And um, yeah, so I just want to show some ways of basically uh, mitigating a lot of this. So I'm going to close that one out. And I have one over here. Uh, and this one, all uh, the difference is, is uh, it doesn't have that middle blend um, transition in between uh, because I want to just start with the two basic materials that we have uh, right now which are uh, the, the light blue and a gray. And so what I'm going to do first is just show how to organize this a little bit better. Um, so inside of here, I can do a make material attributes. So um, I'm basically creating this parameter here. So I'm going to drag this one down. Um, and we can comment it out or frame it if we would like to kind of just keep things organized. Uh, but the main goal is right now we have a lot of uh, our lines and all overlapping with each other. Uh, we could uh, set up some nodes and everything to try to clean those up and get rid of that uh, spaghetti-like uh, look to it. Um, but I think another way you can go about it is actually fully separate out the materials and then kind of blend them in a different way. Uh, and that's what I'm wanting to show here. But I've made a make material attributes down here and I'm going to control C, control V and make a second one. Um, so instead of basically us running all in to this one here, uh, what I'm going to do is actually set it up to where they're individual. So I'm going to take this one here, which is my blue, and I'm going to set it, uh, place it there. And basically, it's going to just go through this process of, um, yeah, setting it all up. And let me go here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that height lerp and probably can go ahead and delete all of these uh, height lerps um, just so we can see things a little bit cleaner. There we go. And that's some specular and stuff. And then I believe that is my height. So yeah, then bringing that over. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down, um, as I'm using here, I have my snow ground normal. Um, so I'm going to actually plug that in to the normal for this bottom one here. And then this one is going to be uh, for that light blue section or so. Um, and I'm going to plug this one into the normal up here. So if we had two different materials, of course, uh, we're kind of building them out separately. And then we're going to blend them um, after this pretty much. So I'm going to just quickly plug these in and I can still keep my texture coordinate back here if I would like um, because overall there's not a lot of uh, overlap that happens on the, the back area here. I, you can keep it pretty organized. Um, so it's really up to you if you would want to split it out, but I think it's fine. So the, the main point of kind of contention is definitely when it comes down to uh, those blend areas. So now I'm going to 
plug this one into my ambient occlusion as well. So now I should have this material here and this material here. And I'm keeping it pretty simple with just the colors and all. Um, and then I have my vertex color as well, which is kind of where we're actually going to blend them together. Um, but with these, what I want to do now is uh, right click and then type in blend material attributes. So now I can actually take these two here um, and blend them together. And then with my alpha, I'm going to use a height lerp. Uh, so what we are previously using, um, just because I want to actually use my height map again um, that I had. So I'm just going to plug this into the height texture. My transition phase is again going to be my, um, my actual vertex color. And then my contrast, I can just set a value here and I'm going to right click and convert it to a parameter. And I'm going to make this my um, blend contrast. I'm going to plug that in there and then just set it with a default value of one. And then this should work for plugging into the alpha here. Cool. And so now we have this set up. I do need to um, just simply, I'm going to place in a zero metallic here. Um, so I'm just getting my one constant. So I'm clicking, holding one while I click uh, to make that. And then I'm going to do a second one and put it in for the roughness uh, just so I can put a basic value in here since I don't have a roughness map of this at the moment. Um, and I'm going to press it again and do the same thing for up here. And I might just leave that one uh, a little bit lower so it's less rough. Um, but now that we have the blend material attributes, uh, we're going to actually plug this in to the material. So what I need to do is actually go up here and get this part and bring it down. And so this is the final output for the material itself. And I'm going to go over here in the details panel and actually hit use material attributes. So you'll see that the uh, visibility of all those has been compressed and um, basically we can now just plug this in and hit apply. And one thing that I might need to do is right now uh, the blue is on top. Um, so let's say that I wanted the snow on top instead. Um, I'm basically just going to switch between these two. And now I can actually, uh, yeah, place out my material. So drug it out and you can see that we have the, the blue part, um, then the actual snow part, and they have two different normal maps and everything else uh, between those. If I were to click on this again, uh, I can of course come in here and actually uh, change my contrast value if I want to sharpen the edges, as you can see here. Um, so that's pretty nice. And as you see as well, this is much cleaner, um, than what we had previously with the other material. And now this is just with our two materials at the moment. Um, but I actually do of course want to go into how to set up something a little bit more along the lines of this, um, and the benefits behind it as well with a lot of threshold blends and what you can do with those blend transitions. Uh, to make some really nice materials. Uh, so with that, that's about it for this video, and I will see you in part two.